Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us uh, again from Sharming, Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt. And we're still following up of the uh, activities at uh, COP27. Uh, we're really honored and delighted to have with us Mr. President Vahgan Khatashurian, President of uh, Armenia. Uh, Mr. President, thank you so much for joining us uh, here at Nile TV International and the Egyptian television. It's great and great honor to have you. Well, this COP is definitely moving from vision to implementation. And uh, talking about your vision concerning holding this COP, COP27 in Egypt, uh, definitely it makes a difference. Thank you for invitation. Uh, you are right. This is the first time I'm taking part in such an event. But I'm aware about the discussions from the previous summits. But this time during COP27 in Egypt, we are more speaking about implementation. But because during discussions we all accept that there have been a lot of agreements, but much of the agreements in reality and practice has not been realized. I was participating in one of the roundtables, which was organized by the President of France, Mr. Macron. This is exactly what we were speaking about during the roundtable. Everyone was saying that if we are not able to fulfill our agreements in the future, the problems will become even more complicated. And uh, the, this issue was raised mostly by developing countries who need financial resources because after COVID, these issues have become even more complicated. And this is exactly what they were saying, that they don't have the financial means to fulfill their obligations. In this regard, of course, the issue of implementation was the most important during these discussions. And we should maybe draw this line probably. That this event in Egypt uh, was unique because people wanted to get answers to their questions whether or not we are ready to continue fulfilling our obligations or not. Yes, uh, it's a great achievement, Mr. President, for Egypt to have uh, COP27 uh, in Egyptian soil. And as uh, His Excellency President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, in his opening remarks, uh, has said that we are drawing here the roadmap uh, for the future, for the coming generations. So it's high time uh, to work together. And it is this sense of togetherness that is going to make uh, the difference. How are you as world leaders uh, going to follow up on the recommendations of COP27 later? Uh, one thing that Egypt is important in this regard is that this event is being held in fact in Africa. And many African countries face different issues. And maybe it was an important message to hold this event in Egypt. For the world to pay more attention to the African countries and their issues. And and during the discussions, I felt the responsibility of the leaders of the world and the leaders of developed countries, their sense of responsibility. Because when we look at the issues of climate change, these are more related to te technological changes, industrial revolutions. 
And the responsible parties for this are mostly the developed countries. Therefore, they bear more responsibility in this regard. And I understood that they are really ready to support the developing countries, including providing financial measures. And it was unique uh, for Egypt that that the developing countries were free to speak about this. And it was well perceived by all of us. I'm sorry for saying this. It's not, I'm not speaking about any complaints. This was just a presentation of the real situation. And we all understood that the problem is more complicated than we can imagine. Yes, uh, we're looking uh, forward, Mr. President, to the recommendations of COP27 so that it is going to be a plan of action uh, for the coming stage while we are putting our hands together. A uh, sense of partnership and cooperation and collaboration also with Armenia uh, in this file, regarding this file after COP. You are very right. This is an important message that as the world, as countries jointly and together we can achieve results when it comes to combating climate change. We all, each one of us, have our part of the work to be done. If we don't do it, we all will suffer. This, this is not a place where one can do and the other one will not do. We all need to do together. Our professional groups will continue their work here. We hope and expect that after these discussions we will receive uh, proposals about what we should be doing. And for the years to come we will be guided by those proposals. Of course we have our commitments. Armenia has obligations and I'm, I'm sure other countries also have obligations under the Paris Agreement of 2015. But I think all of this needs also to be updated. Especially when it comes to implementation. And I think that the work of the professional groups will help us, the leaders of the countries, to know our work better. Definitely, we are looking forward to that, and with the, this sense of togetherness among the world leaders, we will be able to achieve a difference. A final question, uh, Mr. President, uh, a message on your behalf from the mother of the world, Egypt, at COP27, what would you say? Yes, I can say that we are all citizens of the world. We, we, live the world. we have obligations towards our environment. We have things to do. And we shouldn't wait for leaders of the world to do it for us. Every day that we wake up, we have to think about the world, about the environment. Efficient use of water resources, energy resources, adding, increasing green zones. Uh, not littering, not wasting. All of this depends on us, on each one of us. If we can maintain these approaches, each one of us, in our homes, in our apartments, in our life, 
Please be sure that the result will be normal. The example of Armenia is a very good lesson for me. We have been very cruel to our environment. We have destroyed our green space and made them concrete. Mm -hmm. Today, today we have an issue in the city, in Yerevan, in capital city. But now we have changed our approach. So the message is the following, for us all to serve the nature. Because we also have an obligation for the future generation. We need to give the future generation an environment where the conditions will be sufficient for all of us to live in. Yes, uh, Mr. President, Vagan Katashurian, President of Armenia, our guest of honor here uh, talking to us on the sidelines of COP27 from Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt. Mr. President, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure. Yes, a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. That was His Excellency, President of Armenia, Vagan Katasharyan, talking exclusively to Night TV International and the Egyptian television on the sidelines of COP27.